No matter your experience with Transformers canon, the Dinobots will always be noticeable standing front and center for the Autobots on the battlefield. Throughout its vintage run on store shelves, the Triceratops Dinobot known as Slag received a few releases along with his fellow Dinobots. The purpose of today's discussion is to look at the 2021 releases of Studio 86 Slag, or Slug as it's written on the box, and how it compares to the 2014 Fans Toy Scoria figure that was meant to be displayed with the Masterpiece line. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, this is Ken with Toy Connections. If you would like to see more figure reviews, figure comparisons, toy histories, collection footage, and toy insights in general, please be sure to hit subscribe, click that notification bell, and press like. I did do a similar previous comparison for Masterpiece Grimlock versus the Studio 86 version, and I'll leave a link for that in the description below for people who want to go back and see it. Bear with me on that video though as it's a much earlier upload and I haven't yet figured out the optimized frame ratio for photos, nor how to properly use my equipment and editing tools. Just like in the Grimlock video, I'll reiterate that I'm aware that it's not entirely fair to compare a high-priced intended masterpiece style figure with a more mid-priced item like the Studio 86 slag. The goal here is just to show two large-scaled slag figures side by side to see what one has to offer over the other in terms of what's ideal for your collection and to allow you as the audience to take away what you feel like in terms of insight or collection ideas. This isn't a full-on review, so I'm not going to go over everything as there are many individual figure reviews out there for both of these guys. It's obvious that the height difference between these two is quite noticeable as the studio version is about 9.5 inches tall and the Fans Toys version is closer to 11.5 inches tall. And that has to do with the fact that the Fans Toys Scoria or Slag came with extra foot plates that could be added to the MP Grimlock to make him taller. And I didn't use those in my previous video as my visuals fit into the frame better when I didn't. With Slag, I didn't have that option so I'll just elbow grease my way through the obvious height differences. Although the Fans Toys figure was made many years earlier, I do feel that the overall design holds up quite well. In terms of value, I think he was $200 original US dollar retail, and he does come with a decent amount of accessories such as added head and face swaps, both the sword and the gun, as well as the aforementioned foot plates that go with Grimlock. The gold chrome and silver definitely makes him pop out more on your display shelf, though as one commenter mentioned on my Grimlock video, it's probably more cartoon accurate to have the more matted or dull colors rather than the sharpness that's brought out by the metallic colors of this figure. The head and overall design likeness exceeded my expectations back in 2014, and it still holds up to this day. It was only Fans Toys' second masterpiece style figure after their Quake Wave, which was their take on Shockwave, and in my opinion, this figure has still yet to be exceeded as my favorite slag out there. Yes, there are some out there that have been released by companies like Giga Power, which still look quite incredible, but I do lean towards Fans Toys since they were the company that came out when I was looking for these figures. So in any case, take a good look at this slag, including the back of the figure and how things seem to tuck in quite nicely without an insane amount of kibble. Now for a look at the Studio 86 version, and despite the matted color scheme, I think he works just fine. For a mid-priced figure, I wish he would have come with the sword, but I'll make do with just having the gun. As you'll see here, the gun is also a duller color compared to the chromed Fans Toys one, but that's totally fine for this figure. The studio version also comes with Daniel Witwicky, which like the wheelie figure that came with Grimlock, does not have any knee articulation and serves more as an accessory rather than an actual figure. As you can see here, I'm trying to stand him up, but the battle was lost before I even started. To be fair though, he does look good riding on Slag's shoulder or on his back in dino mode, and while I do wish they had released one that could actually stand up, like the spike in the exosuit that came with uh, the MP21 Bumblebee, I'll make do with the Daniel figure. So while not ideal, I'd still rather have it than not have it. As for the overall size and quality of the Studio 86 Slag, it really is worth it in my opinion for this price point. The figures of this era, especially the ones in the War for Cybertron series do take some flack for having a lot of hollowness in the limbs, giving them kind of a light weight that some folks feel make them cheaper than they should. You won't have this problem with Slag as much, though admittedly his horns do have a little bit of hollowness to them. He does have a decent amount of weight though for a figure that doesn't have any die cast, and I'm happy overall with the figure's likeness. And while I've got both figures in robot mode side by side, let's flash up an animation of Slag so you can see for yourselves how they compare. So now looking at the dino mode, from the front the chrome really stands out on the Fans Toys version. But this is both good and bad as it takes away from the detail in the eyes which is also very well done. You won't have this issue as much with the studio version 
as the more matted finish accentuates the fierce eyes that Slag has and he looks more battle ready when displayed. This is where my slight gripe comes with the fans toys one, but there's really not much that can be done about it. The overall length of the figure in this mode makes him feel a little disproportionate compared to the more sturdy compact feel of the Studio Series 1. I do feel like the Studio Series leg is better proportioned in Triceratops mode and is more indicative of what I feel for a Triceratops. Having said that, with the fans toys figure, I get it because the engineering probably had to be this way in order to get him to be as tall as he needed to be in robot mode. Though speaking of the engineering, I do usually gripe at the tolerances when transforming third party figures, but the fans toys one wasn't so bad. Either way though, both figures do the job just fine for me, as I don't think they cheaped us out or robbed us of much, if anything, in this dino mode. I do feel though that the tail is better constructed on the Studio 86 version one, as they've cleverly hid the gun as part of the tail, and it looks very natural in that mode. The Fans Toys one is okay, but the tail feels a little smaller than it should, but that's just my gut feel. I should note though that the, in the weight of the Fans Toys one is pretty heavy, so it definitely gives it a high-end feel. Now we should have a look at each figure with their Grimlock counterparts. Now for the Fans Toys version, note that the MP08 Grimlock shown here has the added foot plates, so while this is acceptable, the overall width of the figure could be better. If you can get the Fans Toys version of Grimlock known as Grinder, opt for that instead. I'm happy with the MP08 this way, but I can't speak for you guys as fans. As I know some friends did get the Grinder figure due to the more proportional girth compared to the MP08. As for the Studio Slag, he matches up very well here with the Studio Grimlock counterpart, not surprisingly. As mentioned, they both have their Wheelie and Daniel add-on accessory slash semi-figures. Not much to say here other than the fact that I just think they look really great together. So closing things out, I'm certainly a fan of both figures, and I'm certainly keeping both. But on that same note, I'm also certainly a lover of Dinobots, as I'm sure many of you are. As mentioned earlier, I'm not drawing any final conclusions, more so just presenting the side-by-side -side aesthetics and letting you guys as viewers take away from this what you will. The idea here is to throw in my two cents and let you guys decide what it's worth. But if I had to recommend something, well, I'll just say if you're a big Transformers fan and you want to dedicate the display space to both of them, buy both. If you're a casual fan and just want one slag, then I'll let you decide what you think is best. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please click on some of my other content here. Please share this with your fellow Transformers friends, subscribe if you already haven't, and I will see you again soon with some more of my favorite toys. Take care.